Hey there, it's J-Dog. Hey, it's Labor Day weekend, and I'm at the Rhythm and Roots Music Festival in Charlestown, Rhode Island. So one of the things I'm going to do in this video is show you what it's like to camp at a music festival. Uh, a music festival is a great way to go and enjoy the music you love and get immersed in the music. And uh, camping at a music festival is a little unique because usually they don't have hookups and it's pretty tight quarters, which you'll see. But what I want to do is show you uh, kind of what I do at a music festival because uh, over the years I've developed kind of a routine and I've got a bunch of gear and gadgets that make camping a little easier. So I'm going to show you what I do. So camping at a music festival is a little different than camping elsewhere. You know, it's not like camping at a RV park or camping at a campground. There's no assigned sites, and uh, you're usually camping in an open field, and it's pretty close quarters. Here uh, at the Rhythm and Roots Festival, we're camping at an old uh, Air Force base, old World War II Air Force base, and we're camping on the tarmacs. Uh, at least the RVs are. But um, typically, you can run generators, and I'm in the section of the, uh, uh, the camping area where you can run generators. There's a section where the tenters go, and uh, there's no generators over there. But, uh, you can see it's pretty close quarters uh, when you come here, uh, and there's no hookups, uh, which I'll talk about in a, little, in a second here, but you can see uh, what it looks like as I walk kind of down here. Uh, you can see this, the spaces are pretty, uh, pretty tight, uh, pretty close together. And uh, you either can, I'll show you around here also, you can see on the other side here. There's uh, what it looks like in the RV section. They let 1,500 campers uh, in on this festival. Like I said, it's a four-day festival. But uh, when it comes to close quarter camping, you either can deal with it or you can't. If you can't deal with it, don't go camping at a music festival. And if you don't like noise, also that's a thing you'll find at a music festival is that a lot of people come to play music, party late in the evening, but uh, uh, I enjoy it and I enjoy camping here. So let me show you some more stuff that I bring uh, camping at a music festival to make it a little bit easier. So uh, one of the things uh, that I tend to find helpful at a music festival to bring is shade. Uh, typically as I mentioned you're out in a field or on a tarmac here and there's not a lot of shade. And so uh, my RV here, we're under the canopy here but I'll kind of back out so you can see I have a big 16 foot canopy and uh, that helps a lot. And one of the things I've got here is a shade drop. Uh, you can buy these for an RV, a shade drop, uh, and it kind of blocks the sun when it's coming in uh, horizontally in your camper. But uh, it makes a big difference to kind of create a nice little shade room. And uh, I got this one. This is actually not an RV shade drop. This is actually a greenhouse shade cloth that I use. It's a lot less expensive, does the same thing, made of the same material. You buy an RV one, you're gonna pay 100 bucks. This one costs under 40. But you can see it kind of just, uh, I'll go up here so you can see. I got some tabs along here with uh, S hooks. It just kind of puts it up. Uh, and uh, you know, usually if I'm in a field, uh, I kind of secure it with, uh, with stakes in the ground here. I gotta, gotta try to put some uh, water jugs and stuff to, uh, to hold it, but uh, it works. It works for me. It uh, does a pretty good job, but shade's important. Uh, if you don't have shade, uh, you're going to fry out here because usually the music doesn't start until uh, in the afternoon, so it helps to have some shade so you can stay out of the sun. So when you go to a music festival, you pretty much got to bring everything you're going to need because uh, there's no hookups. Uh, I'll talk about food separately, but uh, if you want electricity, you got to bring it because there's no hookups. And uh, a lot of people bring generators. Uh, a lot of places allow generators. Uh, this section I'm camped in allows generators and people bring all types, the little silent Honda ones and they bring the construction generators. <laughs> Here you can pretty much run them all day long. But uh, my RV has a generator, a lot of the RVs have generators in them so they run them sometimes. But uh, what I do is I got a solar panel here. And the solar panel uh, is, uh, I got actually two of these, I only got one hooked up now but this is a 100 watt fixed panel. And uh, I got it charging my batteries. My batteries are under the steps of my RV. Goes into a charge controller behind the chair there. But, uh, but uh, it works really good. Uh, when I'm running these uh, both panels, and I'll put the other one out tomorrow morning, 
Uh, I don't have to run my generator unless I want to use the air conditioner or the microwave. But it works really good in uh, giving me some electricity. And uh, to uh, make use of it, let me go show you inside the coach uh, what you need to have to really make the most use of uh, the solar. So, in order to make use of that electricity that I'm making on my solar panel and putting into my batteries, uh, you got to be able to use it. And luckily, my coach uh, is all wired for direct current, DC. It runs right off the batteries. All the lighting in my coach uh, runs off the, uh, directly off the batteries. Uh, and uh, the radios and uh, even the TV is a DC TV. I have two TVs, but all the lighting, the water, and everything runs uh, off DC. But uh, there's times you need AC. Uh, and uh, primarily, I use AC for charging my electronics, uh, charging your cell phone, charging the cameras I'm using, charging uh, my, uh, my other still cameras that I use, uh, my computer. I mean, that seems to be the biggest need I have for AC current is, is uh, charging stuff. And uh, my rig has an inverter, and that's very key if you're going to go uh, boondocking, uh, dry camping, or to a music festival. If you want to use your AC appliances, you got to have an inverter to con or you know run a generator. But if you're going to use solar and uh, run off your batteries, you got to have an inverter to turn that DC current into AC. And uh, I'll just show you my little inverter here. I'm going to turn it on. But uh, once it comes on, here you can see it's reading. My batteries are fully charged because the solar is charging them at. Uh, 12.8 volts. That's fully charged, and when I turn on that, uh, when I turn on that uh, that inverter, uh, I've got three outlets that are now running AC current. I got one on the floor here, two in the back of the rig that I can plug AC appliances in. I like I say primarily do it for charging up my equipment once a day, uh, but that's very key to uh, when you're going to be boondocking or dry camping and you want to run off solar in your battery, you got to have an inverter if you want to use any AC appliances. So the next thing you need to be concerned about uh, when dry camping at a music festival is water. Uh, this festival uh, does provide a water spigot. There's one place to go get water for all 1,500 people. Uh, it's, not, it's, uh, you know, it's not the best situation, but uh, it helps if you bring your own water. So my RV holds 32 gallons of fresh water and six gallons of hot water. And uh, I come with a full tank. And I also bring a, a extra tank with me. I bring a six gallon water jug with me. And I'll go down here and show you that, what that looks like. That's my six gallon water jug. And uh, I have a, four, a three gallon one that I also bring, but uh, I mainly use a six gallon one when I'm at a music festival, uh, just because I can lug a lot of water. and. Uh, and uh, I'll show you what I use it. Uh, one of the reason I use, one of the things I use it with. So the other thing I use for here is a shower bag. Uh, this helps for uh, cleaning up. Now uh, this is a solar shower bag, and it's on the hood of my RV. It's being heated up. Uh, this will actually get up to uh, over 100 degrees easy. Uh, it's a little lukewarm right now. I've been sitting here all afternoon. It's cloudy out, but. Uh, I use the uh, solar shower uh, for just washing my hands, uh, and I will take a shower. I'll show you another thing I got here. But uh, they do have showers here. They have showers at a lot of festivals, but there's long lines, and you got to pay. Here, it costs you $15 for a shower pass for the weekend. That's a lot of money to pay for a shower when I can bring my own setup. And uh, the other thing I have is a shower stall. And this is a unit uh, I bought from Cabela's. It's uh, 100 bucks I paid for it many years ago. But uh, you can go in here, and I built that little rack down the bottom, uh, so you don't have to stand in a puddle. Uh, but it's, uh, you can see what it's like in here. But it works pretty good. Uh, you can get in there with a warm shower, soap up, rinse off. That shower bag holds maybe two and a half uh, gallons uh, of water. And I'll use pretty much one of those bags when I take a shower. But it's a way to save your rig. My rig has a shower in it. Uh, but that's the other thing you've got to be aware of at a, at a music festival or dry camping is filling up your holding tanks. Uh, a shower can use a lot of gray water, create a lot of gray water. And I'm here for four days. And uh, you know I don't want to have to pay to get pumped out. So I'll just use the solar shower, especially since my wife's going to join us. Both of us will be showering in there. And we won't have to fill up the, um, the RV shower or um, 
you know, lug a lot of water for that. So that's the other thing. So the last thing I'm just going to mention briefly, and I want to show you some stuff, is food. Uh, the uh, food is probably the one of the least important things you have to worry about because at a music festival, typically, they want to sell you food, and there's a ton of food vendors. Uh, behind me over here is part of the festival. There's one of the music tents over here, and there's a whole bunch of food vendors over there that you can get pretty much anything you want to eat. So let me go over and show you just a, a, it's an example of typically what you're going to see for food at a music festival. Yeah, so on the subject of food, as I mentioned, this festival has a lot of food options here, as you can see. Uh, everything from seafood back here to, uh, you got Greek food, you got barbecue. Uh, you even got some Cajun food coming up here, which is the most popular. But uh, yeah, a lot of choices here. So that's what I typically do is uh, bring some food, but tend to sam sample the food that here is at the festival. So that's the food choices. So that was uh, information I wanted to share about camping at a music festival, and the festival has started, so let's go see some music. Hey, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned.